The jackfruit is growing in worldwide popularity, but it's been an important part of daily life for many people in South Asia for thousands of years. In fact, it's considered the national fruit of Bangladesh and Sri Lanka, as well as the state fruit of Kerala and Tamil Nadu in India. The fruits are versatile and can be used to create things like jams, pickles, and meat substitutes. But other parts of the plant were important too. Hi, I'm Dr. Smithy Nathan, and I'm an archaeologist. I also grew up eating a lot of jackfruit and I got curious about its archaeology. So in this video, we're going to explore the archaeology of jackfruit and how this plant shaped life in ancient South Asia. So let's get into it. So you might be asking, where do jackfruits come from? And the answer is a little tricky. When it comes to origins, archaeologists have narrowed it down to two hypotheses. The first possibility is that it originated in the Western Ghats of India, where my ancestors are from, and eventually spread to Asia, Africa, and the Americas from there. There are different jackfruit varieties in South Asia, and we have archaeological evidence that possibly places jackfruits in parts of South Asia thousands of years ago, but more on that soon. This hypothesis is quite popular and seems to be the most widely accepted. The second hypothesis is that jackfruits originated in Southeast Asia and spread from there. We see relatively high jackfruit variety diversity in Malaysia and jackfruit sibling species diversity in Borneo. When scholars are looking for the origin of a certain plant, we often start in places where we see a lot of varieties of that plant, aka diversity, which both Southeast Asia and South Asia have for jackfruit. We also try to find the wild ancestor when looking at the origins of the domestic domesticated plant which jackfruit is. The wild ancestor of the jackfruit has yet to be identified. However, scholars think that regardless of where the ancestor came from, it was domesticated independently in both South Asia and Southeast Asia. Some scholars point to linguistic studies of the word jackfruit in various languages to support this hypothesis. So since the origins of jackfruit are tricky, most scholars consider it native to both South Asia and Southeast Asia. For me, given that my ancestors are from South Asia, I was really curious about how it shaped ancient life there. Archaeologists working in South Asia believe trading forest fruits like the jackfruit was important to people in this region potentially as far back as 4,000 years ago. Now jackfruit specific archaeological evidence for this theory is limited, but let's look at what we do have. At the small village of Narhan in modern day Uttar Pradesh, a site was excavated in the 1980s where scholars noted jackfruit remains in the earliest layers of the site. The site date range is around 1100 BCE to 800 BCE. Now as with many early archaeobotanical studies, we don't usually get a photograph or detailed description of every remain found, and there were other plants found too. So based on our research, we're not sure if they found seeds, charcoal, or plant impressions, but maybe they'll let us know if they see this video. At the site of Senwar and modern day Bihar, wood charcoal remains of the plant in the jackfruit genus Autocarpus were found in a period dating to 1300 BCE to 700 BCE. Now from my experience identifying wood charcoal, it can be really hard to get to a species level identification for certain trees. In this case, the researchers felt confident that this piece of wood charcoal was from the Autocarpus genus and narrowed down the species to two likely candidates, one being jackfruit. And wood charcoal is not the only archaeobotanical proxy where it might be hard to get down to a species level identification. At a site in Sri Lanka, Artocarpus phytoliths were found as far back as around 36,000 years ago. However, it's hard to tell whether they belong to jackfruit or another closely related species. So while the archaeobotanical evidence isn't straightforward, there is something interesting here. The sites Narhan and Senovar are not located in forests. They're located on the plain. One theory suggests that ancient people started transplanting forest fruit trees like the jackfruit out of the forest and into other areas like plains so they could cultivate them. So jackfruit traveled out of its native forest habitat and potentially influenced agriculture in ancient South Asia for millennia. But there's more to the story here. Not only was jackfruit influential in the economic sense, it was also sacred. The jackfruit tree is mentioned in the Ramayana, a sacred Hindu text. It's part of a list of trees that are considered heart-pleasing, a signal of an optimistic path forward, and possessing ambrosial fruit. Now, the dating of the Ramayana is contentious, and like many religious texts, it has multiple versions. By conservative estimates, the text could be at least around 2,000 years old, but what we can see from this text is that the jackfruit is considered in a very positive light. There are reliefs at temples dating to the first centuries BC and CE, 
that have been interpreted as depictions of jackfruit. These interpretations have led some scholars to think about jackfruit representations elsewhere in South Asia. For example, let's go to modern day Pakistan at the archeological site of Kafir Kot. There, a yogic looking sculpture was unearthed. The leaves on the scepter have been interpreted as coming from the jackfruit. The sacred significance of jackfruit seems to continue over time. In the Burhat Samhita, a 6th century CE encyclopedic-like text, the jackfruit is also mentioned. It's part of a list of worshipable trees and there are detailed instructions on how to graft and maintain the tree. And the sacredness of jackfruit is still present today. For example, in Kerala, just outside of the city of Kotiam, there are three sacred jackfruit trees at the Mahavishnu temple. Recently, they have been dated using dendrochronology and turned out to be 396, 416, and 543 years old. Now, when it comes to the jackfruits wood, I can't help but speculate that ancient people were using the wood for a variety of purposes given how common it was and the fact that it has anti-termite properties. Those wood charcoal pieces we mentioned from Senwar give me a glimmer of hope in this area. In the meantime, there are numerous historical and modern examples of the diverse ways that the wood is used. At the Sri Rama Temple in Kerala, there are numerous intricately carved wooden statues made from jackfruit wood. At the Padmanabhapuram Palace in Tamil Nadu, often considered the world's largest wooden palace in India, there is a pillar carved from a single jackfruit tree. The jackfruit's wood has been used beyond sculptures and buildings. Jackfruit wood has been used for things like furniture and musical instruments. In addition, jackfruit wood, as well as its leaves and roots, have been used as a natural dye. Though the ancient archaeological evidence of jackfruit is limited, we can still take a few things from it, like the jackfruit's influence on ancient agriculture and religions. Historical archaeology examples highlight the diverse way the jackfruit's wood has been harnessed for centuries, which could be a hint of what was happening in ancient times. Now, if you're curious to learn more about how studying plants is part of archaeology, check out this video here. That's all for this video, and we'll catch you in the next one. Bye.